All right. Yeah, see, we, see, if, yeah, you might be able to check that too. We still good over there on that. Okay. Hip hop in the area of the strangers. Yes. The reason why we call ourselves the strangers, mm -hmm. and this is where hip hop comes into play. Yes. None of us are from Fort Worth Beach. Hip hop brought us together. And that's how it is. I've been DJing in the area since the mid 80s when I first got here. Now, how did you first get down here? We're in Fort Worth. United Wayne. States Air Force. So you, okay, thank you so much for your service. Oh yeah, I did nine years, you know. Um, as soon as, I, soon as I got on the base, it was like, I got taken over to the NCO club. Yeah. Um, so I did DJ and I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Went up there and started talking to him, and next thing you know, I was DJing. We best friends to this day, he's like right. my big brother. Right, right. But I ran Eglin, NCO club from 85 to 2002. So you are the flake. Oh yeah, everybody that came through would tell you that. Anybody um, that knows anything about hip hop knows that. See, I was out here. Exactly. From the kids so, yeah. on up. And then you also was uh, very uh, inspirational in the community as well. Oh, right? yeah. Well, I also started DJing in 85 also. Okay. Downtown in the hood. Okay. You know, the same thing, man. Walked up in there doing the DJ and my man Mickey Bro dance. He's like, yo, here, let me see what you can do. Right. 15 minutes later, I was I was, a, I was down with three hallway DJ. You know, so I was DJing on the bass with the night off, and then I'm DJing off the bass with Mickey Bro dance. <laughs> and that's basically night off. It was the night off. All days it was the night off. And my man the night off. How about that? You know, so, um, and I got to travel in the South, you know, spinning with both of them and this and that. Um, and when I got out of the military in 95, I knew I wasn't leaving this area. Right. You know, because this was heavy. This is beautiful here. You know, so I went to school. Um, I volunteered for two years because I thought I was going to be a teacher. Okay. You know, until I had to do a practice. Um, with some middle school kids, and this little kid fenced up to me in New York City, and he was ready to pimp slap me. Yeah, and I said, nah, I can't do that. Right, and right. so I, I ac accidentally ran up on a boys and girls club. Okay. So okay. I grew up in a boys and girls club. Yeah. You know, in New York City. So I went in and started with the gift of gab. Um, the director at the time, he said, yo, I'm interviewing for a team coordinator tomorrow. Come in and interview. I'm like, no problem. Came and got the job. That was like, just like 99. Wow. You know. He told me, he said, I'm tasking you with one thing. They had like 10 teams in the program. He said, I need you to get me some teams in the program. I was like, no problem. Yo, two years later, I had 300 teams signed. Up. Wow, that's awesome. Bro. And he was like, yo, how do you do that? I said, because I'm cool like that. <laughs> you know, first of all, I'm a DJ. Yeah. Second of all, I teach basketball. Yeah, all right. So between sports and music, how am I not the coolest adult that you get to hang out? And then I'm from New York. I'm in, New York. I'm in Florida. It's like these little kids, I'm looking at them like, yo, anything you, you a gangster <laughs> in Fort Walton Beach, anything you think about doing, man, I didn't get didn't even make it around. Here. We dropped you off in Jersey. We yeah, didn't make it out of yeah, Jersey. Yeah, you know, so, and, yeah, but yeah. they can understand the thing, that, the thing that I found out quickly is that kids respect discipline. Yeah. If they know that you're looking out for their best interest, they will follow your lead. Like, I literally put 50, 60 kids in college just based off of basketball and teaching them how to play and instilling something in them, let them know, yo, niggas kill it. Girls and guys. Um, and then just their life in general. I got kids that walk up to me now. They're not kids no 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 more. They're in their 20s and 30s. And I see them at the green door. And they're like, Mr. Ice. And I'm like, okay, you know me, Mr. Ice. And yeah, I used to be in, in school suspension with you. You the coolest kid. <laughs> Let me tell you, I had kids whose parents demanded that the school would put their kids in in school suspension. Wow. So that so they could do their work. So they could get discipline and, and get, get that, that lesson. Get lesson. Yeah. You know, because I, I was all about, uh, but my mentality was I'm preparing these kids for life. Right. Fort Walt Beach is heavy. Yes, it, it ain't is. nowhere close to real life. Yes, it is. And I'm, like I said, man, I think this is just a blessing, man, because, like, I've been blessed to be ins and outs of all types of hip-hop, you know, from Pioneer Original, to, you know, you know, to what we name it, to, you know, you know, name it. But the thing about what I love is that just when it comes on down to it, we real simple, humble, we yeah. care about our family, care about our community. We still do the thing that we love to do. Well, that's and when I met you, I, I, I had to tell him, look, I was like, look, can I please do your film? I had no idea none of this was about. When we, when we was talking about it, no idea. 
No idea. And like, you don't know where we at, and it probably looks like the light could be more over here, or the sound could be there, yeah, the camera we, could be here. We in a library. We in a library room that yeah. nobody used. Nobody used. We didn't, I mean, my man didn't even know they had the equipment. He just happened to walk up in here yeah. and saw this and saw that, and they were like, yo, it's all yours. Yeah. What you need to do is yeah. go by such and such a time. Yeah. You know, yada, and, and gave us the green light. And that's the reason why I love this area. That's the reason why I'm not leaving this area. It is like it's, it's a it's a beautiful area. area. And you know what? Like, you know, um and I agree, man, it's like it's, it's a lot of opportunities. And like I said, like I haven't had a chance to really worry that much about the Republicans. In fact, yeah. the Republicans are so interested in me, just of my physical who I'm walking around being, I be getting stopped like, hey, who are you? Yeah. It's that small of a town where people want to be like, hey, who are you? Who are you? And, and, and I respect it and understand it because I, I like when you're busy in your life and you're content with your life, you're too busy to be worried about somebody else. And, and the other thing is, this is the other thing <laughs> that people, people may not understand. Because we have that private school education. Yeah. 95% of the kids I went to school with were white kids. Yeah, kids. yeah, yeah. So you learn at an early age how to work with everybody work with everybody and, and everybody and you learn how to not let certain things get on your first or last turn. Right. You know, you understand there's a line and if they cross that line, somebody gonna get a two piece. That's true. But up until then, my mentality just growing up being growing up in the South Bronx, I was supposed to be humble, respectful, and treat people the way I want to be treated. And I've always been that way. I can literally say I really have no energy. Because if I feel like your energy is not right for me, I just slide away. That's real. Because there's about another thousand people that I can hang out with. You know, and that's the one thing a lot, that's why I respect, or I, I'll even say in the youngsters, I call them, they respect me. Yeah. Because how many 25, well, I'll say 21 to 30 year olds that actually listen to a old school cat like me when I'm telling them, yo, when you're on the stage, you might want to do it this way. Like yada 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 yada. Um, like I said, we got guys coming in from all over. My man Marcel P. Marcel P. Black out of um, Louisiana, Symmetry out of Texas. We got dudes from from the ATL, from Mississippi, from Alabama, all over coming out into the Green Door, and they love it because it, it, we actually have a hip hop community, you know. And I treat everybody with love because I respect anybody that's trying to pursue their dreams, their passion, their craft. And I feel as a pioneer of hip hop, it's kind of like my duty to, you know, just help them in any way, any way I can, point them in the right direction. Right. Because that's what hip hop is all about. Peace, unity, and having fun. You know, it ain't all about that gangster. That's rap music. Right. That, that's, that's, that, they can have that. Right. And like I tell, I tell everybody, I have nothing against anybody and what they do but this is what i do you know i don't i don't knock what y'all do you'll go right on ahead and do it in more power to you but i can say for all the years that i've been here especially starting with the, the green door yeah. we ain't never had no issues right because the type of people we attract we're all kind of like-minded you know exactly and man i mean it's just like we, we we can go on and talk, and we are going to go on and talk and see more. Um, is it okay if later on we can, um, come and check you out at the Green Door doing something? Definitely, right, man, because you know, you know I got to cut up some great beats and yeah, this and that. Man. You know, because my people in New York, they know what I do, right? but they don't know what I do. See, and, and if you don't, you see, this is another thing, because we come, see, not only do you know the records, you know what to do do with the record, you mm -hmm. know, which records to mix, you know, which mix, and, and, and here's another thing, man, when you when you hear pureness of music, no matter what form it is, it doesn't have to be hip-hop music or rap, mm -hmm. it could be classical, jazz, rock and roll, country, no matter what, but when you hear the pure essence of the music and how it's performed and put together, you cannot help but to appreciate it, it makes it gives you some kind of feeling, whether you like it or not, music is the thing I draw my energy is that 
we could be here in Fort Walton Beach and there could be a glass of beer on the bar, a spider walking underground, maybe three people in there bobbing their heads, but he's still working out like this, full of uh, amphitheater, full of people. Oh yeah, well. And mixing like it ain't nothing. And so, and, and mixing it pure to the point where you just like, well, you know, they you, say, you know what I'm saying? They say when you love what you do, yeah. You, I mean, you love what you do. I've been a DJ since, literally since 77, 78. I've always loved music. So whether it's packed or whether it's not, I'm still gonna have fun. I look at like when, when there's nobody in there, mm -hmm. I'm literally in there practicing. I know people that are at home. And yeah, and, 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 and that's what I was gonna say. Not only are you practicing, you're comfortable, but you do it very well. Yeah, I'm reading the and, and I remember it was kind of cold here for a Walton Beach for, for a little stretch, and yeah. it was like, it was cold out there, like 20 degrees, that's Florida cold, that ain't that ain't for you. Yeah. And you was in there, and there wasn't no heat, but you was in there just door working wide. out, just do, door wide open. <laughs> and we few, few of us coming in, because like, you know, and this is another thing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm blessed because I didn't know what to expect when I came to this area. You know what I mean? And it became something even way beyond my imagination. So, I mean, how everything, this room, you being across the street, meeting with strangers, meeting John, working out in the lightning. So in other words, what I'm saying is like, even though it may be really Republican, if you are following your dream and you're doing something the right way, some of those opportunities will come right to you. That's the truth. They'll come right to you. You won't even have to worry. You, you'll be looking up thinking, did this really happen? Didn't, didn't we just talk about doing this movie for real like yeah. last week? Yeah. And yeah. we're here doing it, you know? And, and, and um, see, like for me, musically, especially when I'm at the studio, yeah. I look at it as teaching, a teaching moment. Because there are a lot of musicians, younger people, they definitely younger than me, they come up in there. <laughs> and so for me be, to be able to play some James Brown, yeah. Jimmy Hendrix, <sighs> Sly Stone, some Parliament Funk and Delta. It's ridiculous. Break it's, ridiculous it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm actually teaching class in here. Yes. I, I remember one night I'm in there playing, and I'm playing some class with James Brown. Yeah. yeah. Bunch of young girls, <laughs> white kids walk by, and they stop, and they start not. they like, what is that? And I'm like, well, you need to come on up in here and take this class. Exactly. Yes. You know, um, <laughs> and, and for me, that's for me, that's the greatest part. I get to make a difference. Musically, right, in the life, the lives of others. You know, what I used to do with the Boys and Girls Club, you know, just make a make, make a, a difference in their lives that way. Now I get to do it in an art form that I grew up loving and doing it. Like I said, to me, it's not a job, and I have so much fun doing it. It ain't even funny. That's all right. right so I literally DJ four or five nights a week. Yes, you know, of all different genres. Well, you say well, if I might add, I gotta keep adding that well. Oh, yeah. listen, like you say, you know, you, well, see, this, this is the thing. Some people say that they DJ, and they just let the record go, and then they be spinning another, and they might spin it, but then they might play that same record that they've been spinning for ten minutes. So, you know, no disrespect, but there's kids that can get busy on that Serato, that can be Serato, that can DJ. But if you don't know the essence of the DJing and what to do with it, and number one thing, we're not really a real DJ. Number one thing with being a DJ, because the, the, the technology has made it where everybody can yeah. call themselves a DJ. And everybody's not a DJ. But the number one thing that separates yeah. DJs is yeah. can you move the crowd? Is, are the people that are your, are your customers having a good time? Yes. You know? And see, the, the thing that separates me from all of them is I'm in the background. I've been doing this since 77, man. I could pull out Frank Sinatra and cut it up. I mean, whereas they're basically playing the top 10 hits of today and yesterday. Yeah. You and, know. And, and, but and it's to each his own. And I'm you can't break their brain, you break their from the Bronx. So the original flavor of watching the pioneers. Okay, let me ask you this. I'm going to go back a little bit okay. and to go forward. When you were younger, and you started DJing around eighth grade and things like that, you knew you was gonna be a DJ. Um, had you seen, or how did you know Van Vada? Um, well, because your brother I'll say, was MCing. I'll say first, um, I'll say, because he wasn't the first DJ, I'll right. say Disco King Mario okay. and 
could be the DJZ and Tyler. Those are the ones that influenced you. They were the ones that influenced me the most okay. because they weren't necessarily cutting and scratching and doing everything that Jazz and Jay was doing. Right, right. You know, and so when I saw them do it, first of all, I was already musically inclined because right. I looked at it as, okay, I can do what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, and then when I got my turntables, first day, true story, Christmas, mm-hmm. Jazzy J comes over to the house. I said, yo, show me how to do this. This brother's like, rah, rah, rah. I was like, okay, I know I ain't gonna be able to do that. <laughs> you know, so, but later on, Christmas Eve, I got my turntable. Right. My older sister's birthday is Christmas. She was having a birthday party. Okay. He said, yo, you got your turntable, she could DJ for the party in the house. You yeah, know, so yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I'm up for the, I got hip hop break beat. Okay. My sister's 10 years older. All right, okay, so. Her friends is coming, I'm in it. <laughs> Ten minutes into, she said, yo, your ass is fire. I'm like, first of all, you ain't paying me. What you mean fire? She said, check this out. And this is my first lesson. Okay. And it stuck with me for the rest of my life. She said, yo, this ain't about your ass. This is my part. Go in my room and get my records. You know what I listen to, and you play the stuff that my age group can get into. She's 10 years old than me. So I go up in, I get sent Santana, yeah. you know, Shaka Khan, yeah. you know, the whole Philly soul scene, mm-hmm. this and that, and that, Parliament, all that stuff. And I start playing that. People start dancing. You know, at the end of the night, at the age of, I wasn't even 16 to 17 yet. Right, right. I got a gig. See? Playing in a club. For, for playing people, in your for house. People, yes, for people that were older than me. And one of my sister's friends said my father owned the club. You know, I would recommend to him that you DJ it. And my sister said, you know he can't drink. He won't be able to get nothing to drink. We gonna have his ass in the booth. He just gonna play. Your sister was already co-signing. Oh, yeah. Right but, but yeah, you know, and so, but that was a lesson that I learned <laughs> yeah. at, from my first party. Right there. You know, it ain't about me. It's about making sure the, the people that are on, people on the dance floor are having a good time. Right. You know, so, and that's what a lot of these guys don't understand now. And yeah. it, it ain't necessarily about, about you. You know now, but there's a difference between hip hop show DJs and DJs. Right. You know, if you're a hip hop show DJ, your job is to work perfect. You know, cut it up and do this, because you're not really, people are not really coming to dance. They're coming to see you get shit up right. on the turntable. But the rest of us, it's all about the customer. A DJ is really and truly in the customer service. You know, your job is to make them dance. Now, you ain't got to play the top song, right. but that's that's the trick in how to do it. How to move that. Can yeah. move that. Well, you I'm do it very well. He does it very well to this day, you guys. And it's, it's fact or to the fact where I was just like, man, I like I said, we had none of this plan. But I was already asking if I could do a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> do the movie. Because it's, it's information that's like, it wows me. You know, some of the things that you tell me, like Jazzy. Jazzy J and Red Alert Cousins and DMC sat behind your brother Sunday at high, school, Rice high school and tried to show him his rhyme. And he was like, don't put that out. I mean, that, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like the level yeah. of how, where they, you know what I'm okay, talking so about. Okay, so now check this out. Yeah, yeah. Um, since, I, like I said, I'm a quote unquote, I, I guess I could say I'm a pioneer in hip hop music. Okay, yes, so, sir. Definitely. Um, I'm, I guess I get the list like my top five. Yes, I was gonna. Your top five. You know, um, I, I, I didn't want to put you on the spot like that. No, nah, I don't have a problem with it. That, that's, that's not, not what you really is. Um, and right for right now, I'm leaving out um, my favorite um, MC when I was growing up, okay. which was Cool Mo D. Cool Mo D. You know, the educated rapper. Yeah. First, let me give you. Let me give you. I guess my history of, 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 of MC. Okay. To me, they are three. That all all MCs come from. Grandmaster Nelly Metal. Yeah. Spiritual. Grandmaster Cass. The slick talk it got around for everything. Quote unquote Jay Z, yada yada yada. Um, and then Kumo D, the educator. The educator rapper. Right. You know, yada yada. And then I'll also say Busy B. Starsky, even though a lot of people disrespect him. He was like, like the first party MC. He didn't have no real, real rhymes, but I mean, he all knew how to rock a party. All MCs come from the rib of one of those four. And then I guess I could throw Raheem in there also, because I'm going to give him respect, because he was the first dude that I heard singing and 
rapping. Raheem Rizzo? No, Raheem from the Furious Five. Okay, the, okay. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so before Rizzo. And, and then as far as female, the first female MC that I had heard of was Shaw Rock. Shaw Rock, yes. Before. And then the Queen Lisa Lee, that was Shaw Rock. Sonic and, and the Zulu Nation. Um, those were the first that I that And it's that by Faith of Blondie. Yeah. And they was, she already had major game. Yeah. And she kind of ripped that mug. Yeah. To be honest with yeah. you. Oh yeah. She, well, they, she, that, that she was way helped. cooler off on the rap tip than people thought. That, that <laughs> her making that song kind of helped push uh, hip hop a little bit, rap form into the mainstream. Yes, yes. Which is unfortunate it had to come that way, but we it's fortunate at the same time because yeah. at that time Blondie was hanging out with that Bob, Bob Fred, Bob Fred, Bob Fred, Bob Fred, Bob Fred, Bob Fred, and a lot of the dancing was important too. Oh yeah, but you know another story it. like like you can like the, the amazing thing is like there could be a graffiti, graffiti artist talking about who was the first one to go get the spray cans and put them, put them on the buildings and what to put on the buildings and where to put them, and, you know, display the art and make it an art form. And then they moved to the train. It all, like Cass said, everything that we have now involves kind of hip hop. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, like I said, they were DJing this stuff before Africa. Cool Herc is cool to put some water in it. Right. Now, Africa Van Bottas was in that organ. Okay. You know, Keith Cowboy and I'm going to say Starsky, they were saying hip hop, right? But Bam actually named it hip hop. Named it hip hop. Bam is the one that came up with the five elements. Because graffiti was out there before it was hip hop. Yes. You yes. know, but he kind of pulled it all together and made it all in the one art form. Know, um, and added the knowledge itself. Yeah. You know, when you were Zulu Nation, you had lessons. It wasn't just about you know, running the streets and saying you were in the Zulu Nation because he was trying to enlighten us right. and let us know. And I want to say some of his lessons came from a, you know, we were the nation of Islam or a 5% nation at the time. A combination. Yeah, of yeah. You know, um, just trying to enlighten us because he understood that we wasn't really getting a first grade, you know, a first grade education. Or was definitely tainted. Yeah, is Bam from the Bronx? Um, as far as I know, yeah. Okay. He's from, I know he ended up, like, in, I guess in the late 70s, you know, actually living in Bronx Hill or okay. That's why back in those days they would call the home of God. You know, okay, yeah. The, mighty, the home of the home of the mighty Zulu Nation, the home of God. Um, he, he was a, 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 a gang leader. He had his own division of Black State. Um, and he, he actually went a trip and went to Africa. Check that out. He won yeah. a trip. And he, 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 he won a trip, and the tri I guess the trip's prize was to go to Africa. And he got to enlighten those. He came back with them, everything. Yes. And the rest of it was quote unquote history. You know, um, I'm not going to say he was the one that said, okay, the gangs don't need to be fighting. I'm pretty sure it was somebody, you know, a couple of different gangs. But they all decided that, you know, why the gangs were really involved in keep the cops from and the, and the white people from kicking our butts into different properties. Yeah. So, okay. So, kill him. Yeah. Of course, that's it. Yeah. And so, then, so, so, like you're saying, like, he went over, had this revelation epiphany. epiphany, yeah, and came back. And you know what? That makes sense. Because if you're, uh, if you come from Morocco, Bronx, and you go to Africa, you probably see nothing but black people getting along with each other. And everybody's black. Yeah. It ain't like your doctor's black, the cab driver's black, the cooks is black, the ladies is black, the is black, the homies is black, the hood is black, yeah, so the stores are black. So basically, and ain't nobody fighting and everybody having a good time. They dancing over here. Yeah. It make you probably feel uh, embarrassed. Yeah, to be so quite honest, as, a, as, a, as an American, you probably, you probably feel, because I've been telling my girl I'm gonna go to Africa, and everybody I ask that goes there, the first thing they tell me feel is that you feel like you a savage going to there because it's so peaceful. Yeah. And you sitting there thinking, you know, because we've been trained to have to, unfortunately, like, be against our own yeah. in certain areas of yeah. the country. Where, you know, that we can't, we can't, that, that, that Willie Litz theory is real. Oh, yeah. And so, like, I can see, I mean, it's, it's intense, which is what I'm learning, but I'm just tripping that this is brand new. Oh, oh yeah. Right, right, right. yeah. Africa Bad Bob. Yeah. So he probably wasn't African Bad Bob then. He probably nah, was his name, uh, I'm not going to say his real name. <laughs> but, uh, 
He was an African band. Yeah, that's the truth. That's okay. That's wow. That's enlightening. And he started his own Zulu nation. And like I said, it was all about peace, unity, and having fun. Sure. Like a little tribe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he used to, if you look at his stuff, his pictures are he always, you know, had on his. Yeah, we well, had the, the. Well, that was, that was. But what's crazy, though, is like, you know, the, the spirit and the energy of hip hop was there. So he goes there, gets this epiphany, and like you said, kind of organized it. Yeah. So, now how everybody many, else was still doing their own thing. Grandmaster Flash and them were still doing their thing. Yes. Um, Funky Four Plus One, the Cold Crush Brothers, by, by now they, they started coming out with Charlie Chase and Tony Tony, and they was doing what they were doing. Bam always had his own way. Um, and anybody, and, and we talk of major pillars in the Bronx, right? Yeah. Because you're talking this pillar, this pillar, yeah. this pillar, yeah. this pillar, and this yeah. pillar, and they're all working within the confines of the Bronx. Yes. And, and then, getting along with each other. And but getting see, along. But see the difference between. Because uh, I never heard of any beefs between those crews, and they were, well, they were because, probably, you know. Well, because the Zulu Nation, it wasn't 10, 15, 20, 30 dudes. It was literally legitimately 500 to 1,000. They were spread throughout the tri-state area. Right, right. You know, so if he did this, it might be 500 dudes rolling with whatever. What's the problem? And then he had his Gestapo crew, which some of them are, I'll just say, have been in America's most wanted. Yeah. Um, you know, they, you see them in the different shows, isn't it? You know, they was real. Oh, real. They were so they, respected they, that they were real to this they, day. They, no, bro, some of them, and they got bodies. Yeah, you might not yeah. ever see it. some of them ever again. Yeah, totally but, yeah. you know, it was like, it was a respect thing, yeah. you know, because everybody had their own section of the Bronx, but everybody was kind of free to mix and mingle, uh, especially if you were well known. Okay. You know, and that's the one thing, you know, with me being down with the Zulu Nation, me and my brother, you know, and a couple of my other friends from South, whenever we had, there was some issue or whatever. Mess with them. That's real. That's real. And, and so that kind of gave me a pass. You know, where I didn't have to deal with some stuff. I can still remember listening to the underground mixtapes and hearing the Red Alert Zoo oh, yeah. Nation. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, and, 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 um, now, I have to keep referring back to Funk, Funk Master Jackson, because Funk would be the one that, that went to New York mm -hmm. and got those tapes and rubbed shoulders with the, the, the pioneers and the going because he Doing that man with the techniques in 12 by 10. Hold on, and let me tell you about Red Alert. Like I told you, Red Alert is humble. I learned from yes. this from him. Yes. He wasn't even the first choice as far as the radio. Right. It was African Islam, and it was Jazzy J. Jazzy J gave it up because there was no quote unquote money involved. <laughs> Red Alert took it. And when on I Kiss, said, right? Took, oh, wait, was he on Google? Well, he was yeah, BLS. Kiss. It was Kiss, right? Yeah. yeah when, when I say Red Alert took it and yeah. ran with it, yes. He, what he had, he, I think he just celebrated 30, 30 some years, 30 some years already. Mm -hmm. Red and Alert was one of the first people, first that I met yeah. when I started working in radio, yeah. and he was one of the coolest. I'm gonna tell you, the, besides yourself, you know, like I said, I got uh, me and DJ to get along because you know I'm MC, and it must be that natural. We let's go, me and you, let's do it. That part, that's like you know, but Kid Capri was always cool with me. Cool with me. And matter of fact, I met Kid Capri while I met Cool Herb. Okay. And I gotta share my, my story with you because we was at, uh, we was in 2000, 1999, when FUBU was getting ready to do that thing. They did, they did, FUBU did a thing in St. Martin. FUBU had this big office, food, all the artists in there. And I was a production assistant for uh, FUBU. You know, you know, all these guys and stuff right there, you know, the crew. Mm -hmm. And so me and Starsky, so we got a chance. You know, we, 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 was, we was on top, man. We was having fun. And so I remember going to get the keys to Mary J. Blige house. Mary had a crazy suite and mm -hmm. the thing. And Kid got there early and he had the keys. And he, we had Kid's keys. He was like, well, here you go, Kid. Here go your keys. He said, like, what keys is those? I was like, that's Mary's spot. Mary? Let's go. I want to see Mary's spot. You know how Kid mm -hmm. is. I want to see Mary's spot. Let's go. Let's go check it. But Kid, <laughs> we walk in. And the first thing he does is pull out a backwood. And, and I'm like, kid, you probably shouldn't. He's like, what? This man, be straight. 
<laughs> I know I'm all probably put people on blast, but I'm just uh, keeping it. I'm, I'm just keeping it. Way. I'm just keeping it 100. And that's how me and Kid became cool, right then and there on that night. So then later, we uh we just started keeping just walking the beach, and I said we had met these cute, these two cute little ladies, like these Hines, the Air Hines Lewis, right? So we was hanging with them, and then next thing we had got uh, not these girls that we were with, but these other chicks that got into the to the pool. We had took the girls to the pool, and there was these other kids in there, and these dudes and girls, they was all acting all kind of, you know, trying to get a little crazy. And lo and behold, they go kick Capri and cool her in the pool, right there. And then they saw us, and they was like, saw us looking over there, but they was like, you know, I'll come over here with us. You know what I'm saying? It's just, and that was, it was just like, it was like one of the moments, like, you know, people have trouble in their life now, yeah. going through all these different issues. He could see through the debauchery. He was like, yeah, yeah, I'll come on over here. Oh, yeah. You know, and that, and then we get over there, it's cool, her and kick it free. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So me and Star was like, wow. We talked like 2000, so it was like 18 years ago. I got you. So, so it was like, um, that was how I met cool, her. Right. You know, even be, even being in, in hip hop all these years, and I see, and I, and I love the picture that you got with cool, her. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and some of the back, like that she when you was younger, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? You know, so you got some, you know, some the videos playing behind us, so you know what I'm saying? So like, oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's pretty dope, man. I mean, like, we could be, we could talk forever. I talk too much, to be honest with you. I need to be quiet. Shoot, I, I, you get me so inspired. But then, so Bad Bada did that, and then, um, well, you know, Bad Bada's actually gone through a lot of different things lately. Uh, different yeah, accusations yeah, and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. and yeah. you know, it pains me. It pains all of us because uh, we all want, don't we don't want certain things to negate our hip hop. But yo, no matter what happens in his situation, he brought it out there, and they can't take it back. That's true. You know, they can't um, take that back. You know, um, like I said, I, I, I'm thankful for the fact that. I know what's going on with him. Yeah. Um, but however it ends up, you know, that's between him and, and himself and God. Yeah. And whoever he's affected in a negative, you know, in a negative way. Um, I know some of the people that are involved in it. You know, so I have no reason to not you know, believe. You know, um, so it, as far as I'm concerned, it is what it is. Because forever doing the Jazzy Five, you're going to be tied yeah. in some kind of shape or form with that bad body. So that's good that you, that's honest, and that's you know, you real, you real brother. So you know, I know that you're going to keep it 100. Well, see, and I know you respect bad body, you know, for what he just said. Yeah. Getting your, you know, and see for me, that I guess that's a major issue, mm-hmm. you know. But see, I have other issues, right? Well, if you like. With, with, him, with, with, with him, yeah. Um, yeah. As far as you know, in, as far as the music business is concerned, I can you know, he, was, he, was, he was our um, our link to the music business, you know. And figuring, you know, he's our big brother, yeah. You know, and he's the one that's bringing in, bringing us in. He would be the one to look out for us, you know, and come to find out he was literally looking out for himself, yeah. You know, which is, you know, it's disappointing. But I understand money is the root of all evil, and no matter how um, and what position a person is in, or how high esteem you may put them in, right? It all comes down to it's called the music business, and you trust no one. And that's exactly the truth. We didn't know. Yeah, okay. we're talking 19, 17 year olds and this and that. Um, and for him to do what he did. And still do it. Yeah. You know, it's messed up. You know, and just just a, a quick side note, my brother passed away. He actually showed up at the funeral. Um, at the time, my brother had no insurance or anything like that. You know, um, this man, knowing that he 
put out strong. I'm not even talking about jazz sensation. Right? I'm talking about some of his songs that he, he took from the tape and put them on record, right? And got paid for them. Yeah. Came to my brother's funeral, shook my hand, talked to my my sister, my mother, and me, you know, everybody else, and did not offer, you know, what's going on? Are you know, y'all gonna be able to afford his, you know, casket or his funeral or whatever, whatever his headstone? I, I want to put something towards that, you know, because he was the first quote unquote real lyrical MC that was down with the group. And he basically didn't do anything, you know. Um, and so, like I said, for me, it is what it is. Yeah. I was always taught, you know, forgive, but I never forget. Exactly. You know, and what goes around coming in. Yeah. But, but for all, for, for the dirt that he's done yeah. in his lifetime, he has to answer to somebody for that. Whether it's the man above yeah. or, or or human on this planet, yeah. you know. Um, and I've always been the type of person for me life goes on. But see, that's like a, that seems like in the early pioneer days, there would be that one or two people that knew what was timing in. You know what I'm saying? Knew what was going on. They knew about the publishing. They had the inside track with the Tom Sullivan. You know the guys that, are, that have the money, and so you know the thing is, the first thing I learned was I used to read this book like crazy, this business week when I was young, and so when I got to do it, when I got to New York, I was all about my business. And what what was crazy thing about it was, you know, like I said I had a publishing company, you know, I had a ready ready for record label, you know, I had Dynasty Records, I didn't mm-hmm. trademark it until FYJ and all those guys, mm-hmm. but you know, still. Sometimes, what I add up in, in, in the mid '90s, knowing all that, too much this, people didn't want to mess with me. Yeah, that's true. Because it was like, oh, you know too much. You know about your publisher. Oh, okay. Well, who's gonna who's gonna produce your music? I'm making my own music. Oh, uh, no, no, you can't make your own music, write your own songs, own your own publishing, and your own label. You can't do that. And I would ask them, well, why not? You know, because I wanted to do TV. What we doing now, right? But I'm just saying how to. It's crazy how to. The levels of change, like, and the thing is, y'all did it for fun. You yeah. went in there on a one day, one day knocked out this classic record, came up, touched it up. You, you said, "Yo, get my man who can mix it." Yeah. They went, got my man who mixed it. The, the record labels and the, and the producers is already in house when you're recording it. Yeah. I mean, so the way that your situation is like is like a once in a lifetime type of thing. Like if you if you was to tell an artist today that the head of the label that Baby's that Slim and Baby gonna be in the studio when you drop in with Lil Wayne and Drake and Nicki and your first single and you ain't gotta do nothing crazy, no sexual crazy ventures. You just go in and rock a record, have fun, and it's gonna be a classic. You know what I'm saying? And all these people are sitting in there knowing this, licking their lips knowing that, and they chops like, oh, we're gonna get so much money. And you poor artists are sitting there like, the contract you get offered is, 0.2%, that's 0.4 each of five people. And one person had just an eight bar. Or two bars, four bars, six bars, eight bars. Yeah, eight bars. I mean, no, no offense, no, but just yeah. keeping it business. And so not only did you make a 10 minute record, they took this record, they probably, they got, what you said, they made shoes up to Jazz and Five, man, T-shirt, they, we, merchandise, man, we, overseas. Yo, we, we investigated stuff, man. We yeah. found shoes with our names on it. Rain jacket with the Jazzy Five emblem on the back. Uh, found the CD. Our song came out in record form. It was no CD there, right? You can't even watch. So I'm overseas in the military, man. And I'm, I'm a record shopping, man, taking through the crates, man. And I see a CD single. Um, Africa Man by the Jazzy Five, Jazzy Sensation. I look at the picture of the CD single, and it's Africa Man by the Jazzy Day and so so and so. So it's five people. But it says Jazzy, um, Africa Man Bond, and Jazzy Bond. So I'm like, okay. And it said Jazzy Sensation on the back of it. So I said, okay. Then I got on putting it in my songs playing. And I'm sitting there going, you like overseas series. and you get your own, and you find your record yeah, on yeah, duty. Yeah. You know, like, like I said, yeah, that, yeah. That, 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 that's still, that's that ain't over. That's still bad. That's still right there. 
yeah, I'm gonna leave that one alone. I mean, I mean, that's, well, that's a good thing though. But you know, we see that that, that was a pattern, you know, that happened in Cass, as you mentioned. Man, you know, man, man, it's been happening since yeah. the, the 40s, the 50s, and 60s, man. Right, right. Chuck Berry, they would make a song, and um, like we'll just say the powers that be. That same song would be put out two weeks later, being sung by Pat Boone. Man, you ain't hear something crazy. No, speaking so, of stuff, we decided that the last week I went to New Orleans and went to the JM Records, was where Chuck Berry, Little Richard, yeah. Jerry Newman was pretty much they started rock and roll. Yeah. In this studio. Guess yeah. what this mug is now? A laundry mat. They got the, how disrespectful it is, they still got the pictures A Little Richard and Jay and the and they got a laundry mat right here and a folding table. And the girl, when we went in there to do the tour, she was so disgusted because we were trying to learn about the history. She was mad because we in her way. A, but a laundry mat, man. I mean, so what I'm just saying is like, it's great to get your history out truthfully and get it real because if you let the powers that be there to be pushed anything over to the well, side and, 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 and take all everything. And they've actually, you know, they've actually but the good thing is, mm -hmm. most of us are still here. Yes. You know, and yeah. so, like right now, there are hip hop museums popping up all over. Um, I know my boy LG and the rest of my crew from NYC, they're actually attempting to break ground on a, on a hip hop museum that's supposed to be in the South Bronx. Nice. Oh, um, wow. That makes great sense. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's where it's supposed to be. That's where it's supposed you know, to be. Because that's where it started at. But I don't have a problem with, you know, I think there's one in DC. That, there's a few other, a few in other places in this man. But um, yeah. um, they're actually trying to do a universal hip hop um, spot where the origins, you know, because even you go to you go to these other places like the one in DC, they may have. I see where they have a, a pop up Grandmaster Cas and Grandmaster. Yeah, yeah, I gotta tell you something. You know what I'm saying? I tell you what that is. Y'all can't get everything. Yeah, not right, right off the bat. Right. Right. But, but that makes sense. Like that's awesome. Just even there are a whole lot of people who so like right. never got in their due. Right. You know, whether they're whether they're pioneers or people that came before the pioneers. Yeah. Um, and like my boy, me and my boy is Jesse Fox. So we're like, I'm, I would never say we were the greatest, you know, rap group all time and nothing like that, but we. You have, but you got a classic record. We got a classic record. That was one of the top top records that everybody knew. We knew this record in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Let me tell you. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> years ago, while I'm investigating all this stuff about the Jazz Five, right? Yeah, yeah. I pull up this magazine, this site, and what they did was they had the number one hip hop record every year from the first day hip hop music was going out. So I guess like seventy nine eighty was the shit of it. I look at 81, 82, y'all record. It was, Jazz Sensation was the number one song, and so they had an article about it. And then I think like number two might have been um, Treacherous Three, and, and Curtis Blow or somebody that else. That would have been Kumo B, right? Treacherous Three. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Treacherous Three, yeah. but before he went so long. Okay. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. And it wasn't very long after you actually left the area of Bronx, come down, come down to Destiny, it was like, oh, I'll be, um, Probably about 85, 86, this is when Scholar Rocket and Karis One start getting together. Brian Gill, and here, here you go with another one. Man. You, <laughs> since you want to bring up Karis One and Scott Rock, I mean, Chuck Freeze actually started working in a homeless show. Is this about to be his, that's his, his is this about to be some that's, his, his that's hip hop where, history? That's where he met Karis One. Okay, so you mean the tip? Okay, this is Goosebumps. Did you not see that? This uh, is a history. Nah, that's, that's now come on, man. That's, that's, come on, man. That's what he told me. He said, "Yo, KRS One." And I, I'm not gonna say it was a, 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 a it, homeless show. It, no, it, was it makes like that, sense because that's where he went. Yeah. And okay. And he was working there, so he's a counselor up there. Scott Rock's up there. Well, I'm not gonna say Scott Rock. I'm gonna say KRS One. KRS One is up there. Well, if you tell Scott, if you tell Karis One, and he says he tells him that Scott LaRock was up there, okay, well, then it was and had this music thing going on. Mm -hmm. But what you probably telling me was that Chuck Freeze probably was working with him and influenced Karis One while he was there too. Well, I can't. It only makes no, sense. I can't, you know, I Chuck Freeze was already doing it. No, that's true. And they knew who he was. Well, I Chris think Chris knew who he was. Yeah, yeah. 
you would think so. Yeah, I know you know that. I know, I, I, I know kind of, like, King Karen's been this. Because KRS, yeah. KRS one is basically uh, a branch yeah. from the tree of African men and women. And when, when I started to get into mine, I wanted to be Big Daddy Kane, LL. I wanted to be LL. Yeah, don't forget my top five, man. I forgot all about that. And, and, and KRS one. Rock him, Big Daddy Kane, LL, KRS one. So it was like it didn't chuck me. So I wanted to be an ice cube. I wanted to be all of them at once. But I also had the curse grow in me. I also had the Melly Mel in me. And then I also had what else to what your brother did, because we had um, when we got into the group dynamics, that was bad flavor for our our, our, our transitions. But I was wondering where KRS one fit in in your story because they, they seem to almost overlap. Well see for me, I was born in 85. Right. I think he kind of came out in 86, 87. 87. Yeah. Kim, yeah. 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 Um, but there was that change. What I'm saying is in, in other words, what I'm saying is you can see the significant if you leave, you leave the area, you one of the main voices, one of the main ones to lead, practice, you know, to gather everybody. You leave the area, it kind of, everybody starts doing their own thing. You know what I'm saying? But the other cats stick around yeah. for days and decades, they keep on yeah. moving, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, it was almost like for you, to, when you kind of branched and came down here, that opened up that MCN bringing the real haters, but this is the Bronx. This is yeah. where hip hop started. Yeah. Now we, we know y'all just know all this and that, but here's really what it is. Here's yeah. where it came out of. And that makes that's and to know that Chuck Freeze was a part of that. Oh yeah, Chuck Freeze. The one thing about him was while the rest of us kind of backed off, mm -hmm. he was still a hundred percent back hip hop. Yeah. You know, he was he was still running around doing shows, acting like he crazy, like he like he tended to Still doing what we are attempting to do and what he loves to do. And, you know, and like he I did said, the respect for work because he, he, he did it. OG, the OG, you know. Um, right. See, me, like I said, when I, when I left, it was like, you know, fuck hip hop. Right. <laughs> I was That's like, awesome. yo, y'all jerk me. You know, um, I would have loved it, but it was like, I know I wasn't coming down here, you know, trying to be on my street. You know, and even. You're top five. You're top five. Okay, you're top, top five. five. I'm sorry, sorry, top um, five. Where we were out of town for this one? Rock Kim. Rock Kim. Yes. Nas. Yes. Now, after that, it gets it gets sketchy. Cause see, I can say Biggie and Tupac. Biggie um, gave me my name. I said Biggie gave me my name. I hear you. Yeah. Um, so I gotta put Biggie in there. But for me, I'm, I'm a. Dude. He would've been in there anyway. Look, yeah, Biggie. <laughs> and, and, and I was I was Pop. really really a Tupac fan until after he passed away, and I picked up his like a double greatest hit scene. And I actually sat down and listened to it. I was like, damn, this brother was yeah. deep, deep. How you go from gangster party to Brenda had a baby? You know what's crazy about Pac? Pac, 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 Pac was, um, at first, when I was living in Michigan and watching Thug Life and all the Pac Herb Sound and all those things, I, I, I knew he was brilliant. I knew he was brilliant when he did the Digital Underground yeah. thing. Yeah, that's right? what I preferred. I beat them on that. So, yeah. But when he can start, so when he went from that, that um, and then he did Juice and all of the movies and stuff. I at first thought it was a persona, and then yeah, we gotta wrap up some stuff. But um, but the thing about Pac is I got a chance to meet Pac too. And um, when I met him, it was it was bipolar wildfire. One minute he was, you know, next minute his next minute he was revved up about something that I mentioned to him about. That I didn't even know I was getting ready to rev him up. I just told him I'm from Michigan. Oh, word, I got some. Man, that, that bullshit show in Lansing. And then he went off on me about the Lansing show. And I had, I had to look it up on the internet, like, last year, just to see what he was talking about back in 94. You know what I'm saying? So, but the thing, um, but like, you know, like, there's the M&Ms, and, you know, but like, the thing about having the greatest MCs and your greatest list is I think that, that they should have some kind of, we shouldn't put no limit on it. Because I really think that all of hip, all essence of hip hop is great. Because 
you remember a time when every record would come out and everybody would be there and go get it? Oh, yeah. If it was Big Daddy Kane, but it was Heavy D, or well, see, Kid and Play. Well, see, this is my thing. <laughs> what, the reason why. Yeah, it should be. It should be just top five. It should be top whatever. Top but whatever. See, but see, like I said, see, I love, I love them. them. Yeah. Under Grandmaster Cash. Yeah. If I got Rock Hill, why do you think that? Yeah. And, and, and you do all the rest of them too. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I mean, you know, and they were everybody. They yeah. Were, I, I mean, I respected all of because Big Daddy Kane used to spit straight fire. You know, but I was a Rock Hill dude. I mean, first of all, because he was so laid back and, and his metaphors and the way he described stuff. And, and see, and I think that's now, probably, it probably makes it make probably makes you think because like the way that we got records, the way that we got music in the Midwest. Is that we had a lot of house music, mm -hmm. so yeah. we, we we would hear that check 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 yeah. check your body check yeah. check 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 your body. So I would listen to that on the the radio with Fuzzy, WB WBMX or whatever around Chicago when I was on this might have been my grandmother's house in Benton Harbor. But then so we had the house thing going on, and I man, matter of fact, this is what it is. My junior high class, you talk about being on the table. Mm -hmm. I was the only one that went the rap direction. But all the other dudes that did mine are like big time house and pioneer DJs right now. Then they came, we all came up on the tone. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not thinking about it. What up, Darnell D? What up, Dub D? What up, Dub? What up, Chance? What up, Fanon? What up, Jay Demo? Everybody came out of tone. So when you break down those categories of Cass and Melly Mel and that, it it makes so crazy sense to me because you there. I guess your name was it. Yeah. And so you know. Why would you need that if you got that? Well, just like the house music and the break and the hip hop. But I'm saying that because we didn't get all the music, but we would also get like MC Shadi yeah. out of Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. And we would get Luke. He's from New York. Was it really MC Shadi? He went down to ATL. Who was it? Yes. And he was yeah, dope. Right. And, and he would go down and he was flipping that Atlanta stuff, but I knew he. See, he was one of the early pioneers to leave New York, go to yeah. Atlanta, kill it, blow it up, and then the Luke boys was doing their thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. Let me tell you, when I first when I first got into '85, right? Yeah. I left New York City hip hop. Mm -hmm. The only real up tempo hip hop song that I ever heard was Planet Rock. Yes. Now there was a few other ones, but Planet Rock was like the fucking bomb. So I get here '85. We talking the end of '85, early '86. Mm -hmm. I go to LA. And my man, Mickey Jordan, DJ at the Elks Lodge, yeah. and he was playing Planet Rock. And they was, they, the people was going crazy for him. 86, I mean, he played it for like 15 minutes. I can dig he it. Played the instrumental, these dudes was on the microphone, and they used to ride out, like the ride out DJ. And I'm sitting there going, like, he was born in the place 86 that died in New York like <laughs> eight, two, three years ago. <laughs> so, but when I went up there, I was like, yo, you know, these are my boys. I mean, I share stage with you. Globe and Pow Wow and Biggs and Africa Van Water and this yeah. and that. And then he let me DJ and from then on, like I said, I was down by law all, yeah. all over the place, sorry. All over the place. Right. And so it was like it it just but then he was playing Planet Rock. Yeah. I was, he's like, yeah, okay, show me what you can do. Uh, so well, give me a song. I'm thinking, <laughs> what can he give me that this is this that's this fast? He gave me the loop. He gave me the loop joy. Yo, throw that dick. <laughs> I'm listening to headphones, I'm like, it's a brand new dance in the night when you're away. Throw that D. Throw that D. I'm like, what the fuck? Throw that D. Yo, but yeah. I cut that shit up and put it on. He was like, yo, you damn. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and um, the stuff that was coming out of the um, the West Coast, Don't Stop the Rock. Um, yeah. Dan, 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 dan. See, oh, rock. Yeah, all that. Mm -hmm. I ain't never heard none of that, man, until I got that. Yeah. And you know what else was, was um, uh, Tam Tam Club? Tom Tom Club, oh, okay. yeah. and um, there was a record that I still wanted to do. I think somebody beat me to it, but I've been wanting to do it for years. The was a segment. The boys that had the electronic things, it was like. Crap, crap work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Trans Room Express. <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. You play that tonight. I'm going off. Yo, I'm telling you. Hey, yo, <laughs> Van oh. He introduced us to all. Okay, of now that is important because those were the records that would be landing in Boogie. So you know the kind of fabric of where we live. Listen to Planet Rock. Yeah. Planet Rock is Trans Express speeding up 100 beats. It is. 
Jack and Jill girl, mm -hmm. no offense to her, but she was rocking with the hottest church on the planet. And and the kids would be in there just doing their little, I remember see, Chicago party. But see, the thing you gotta remember is back then, it wasn't necessarily about the singing, it was all about the beat. Right. You know, house music is all about the, and the groove that's on top of the beat. And house music, is perceived, and see, house music to me came out of that planet. Right. It came out of those uh, early, see, early. See, I don't, I don't, well, I can't, I, I don't know. This this, I this, 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 this is how music no, but how, yes, yes, this was it. This was it. music was going on in Chicago in the 70s. 70s, man. though. We well, I'm, old, 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 old. I'm born in 71, like I said. I remember listening to Bad Boy Bill. I'm telling myself, because yeah. I could hear all of those. Jack, 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 yeah. Jack, Jack. That's what we used to give me that. They would cut it up and they would like, they like, they like BMX house with um, Farley. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so but what I'm saying is, so when I heard the switch over to hip hop, because yeah. we had always been house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when yeah. we when it was big, reminded me a lot of Planet Rock. Now all of it, all, every started, everything started to come together. And yeah, so like, Planet Rock came out like '82, '83. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking they, house music was over. It was underground. Yeah. You know, because I remember going to um, close to New York City, Bentley's, and this and that. I hate this. We're gonna have to no, come man. back with. No. We're gonna come back to you the next time. We we making the library folks go home. And you know what I'm true. saying? And that's real. On the mic, Michelle. Hey, it's been a pleasure. You know, this is just part one. Yo, tonight he's actually coming over to the green door. Catch me live doing what I do. Check out some of the show. You know, so people can actually see what it is I do now. I'm still DJ, still rocking out, but I'm also encouraging the younger hip hop generation to do what they do. That's real. Hey, man, it's been a pleasure, bro. And we got so much to talk about. You know, we rap with you, little man. Peace. Peace. Now you gotta wrap. Oh man, my ears. You gotta wrap all this up, or can you leave it where it's at? I gotta wrap it all up.